Hello everyone. This is the second of two sessions on ritual in Confucian philosophy. Now, uh, today I want to look at a different interpretation from the one we saw last week, which is the interpretation by Amy Oberding. Now, Oberding argues for the importance of good manners or li. The classic Chinese term li means ritual, but it also means good manners or etiquette. It also means gift or ceremony. Uh, there is no actual exact translation in English. Ritual is a very important concept in Chinese philosophy. Ritual can be religious, for example, in burial rites, but it doesn't always need to be. Uh, and so that's why I thought it was important uh, to look at this concept for a class in uh, philosophy of religion. Now, uh, the term of uh, ritual is closely associated with another important concept in Chinese philosophy, which is xiao, or filial piety. And that's the importance of being respectful, even deferential, to your parents and elders. Now, this concept seems rather alien to Westerners, but it is very important in Confucian philosophy. Now, you may recall how Confucius thought that we learn about ethics in our family. From our parents, we learn uh, the first important ethical rules. It's our parents who teach us to say, for example, thank you when you get a present, to greet people politely and so on. For this reason, being respectful to elders is important. Now, what's the philosophical relevance of this? Well, Oberding argues that Western philosophy is characterized by what she calls big moment ethics. And one way in which this is exemplified is in trolley problems. Now, in that scenario first invented by Philippa Foote in the 1950s, you have a trolley that's hurling towards five people. Now, you could save those five people if you diverted the trolley so it would go to one person. And the question is, should you flip the switch? So this is a kind of life and death scenario, which indeed sometimes people will see in everyday life. But very often, uh, our ethical decisions are not so life-changing. Now, etiquette is not as important in uh, Western philosophy as it is in Chinese philosophy. Uh, it's just, for example, something that you can see in etiquette manuals, and it's something that's seen as quite divorced from, um, uh, from ethics. Now, Oberding thinks that in our daily interactions, Etiquette has huge ethical relevance, uh, and so that we should re-appreciate the importance of our manners in how we make everyday ethical decisions. She thinks she likens etiquette rules to dance. Etiquette rules aim at a gracious and pleasing effect, as well as most fundamentally ensuring that one does not trod on the toes of others. Underlying this importance of Li, is Confucius's theory of human nature. As we already saw last week, uh, Confucius thought that human nature is malleable. Uh, and he said that human beings are similar by nature, but they differ on account of their practices. And you can see this, for example, very well in social distancing. This is a practice that's very, very new to us, but already it's influencing how we think. So if you're like me and you watch, uh, say, series on Netflix, there's no better time for that than today, then you might feel uh, when you see people in big crowds or when you see people touching each other, you think it feels morally wrong almost. So there is something about looking at those practices uh, that already now, even though social distancing has only been in effect a few weeks, it's already altering fundamentally how we think of the relationships of others. So now I will examine two philosophers who have argued about the importance of ritual and its connection to human nature. Mose is one of the uh, most important classical Confucian uh, philosophers. He, um, even though he lived in a period that was characterized by turmoil and of uh, little dukeships basically fighting with each other, his uh, fundamental idea is that human nature is good. Um, so we all have a human nature that we all universally share, 
and that nature is good. Uh, for this, to uh, argue for this, he devised a famous thought experiment, which is called the child of the well thought experiment. So he says the reason that people are not born with unfeeling hearts uh, is as follows. Suppose that somebody were to see a child that is supposed that is almost going to fall into a well. Now, if that happened to you, you would feel distress at the thought of the child falling in. And any motivations that you would have to help the child wouldn't be just so that you would curry favor with the parents or be in good standing in the neighborhood, but genuinely because you would um, be feeling sorry. You would feel compassion for the child. And so fundamental to Mungza is the emotion of compassion that he thinks that without it we would not be human. The thought experiment serves to show that the sprouts of virtue are spontaneous and not the result of rational deliberation or just thinking about your own gain. They are internal to us. Mozart forwarded a theory where he thinks that our virtues are rooted in four sprouts or emotional beginnings. Everybody has these beginnings. Everybody has these emotions. And these ultimately lead us to get to cultivate certain virtues. So, for example, the sprout of compassion, uh, the sprout of benevolence is compassion. The sprout of propriety is deference. The sprout of righteousness is shame. And the sprout of wisdom is our sense of right and wrong. So just to focus on two of these, as we've seen, uh, benevolence is the more mature virtue of caring about other people. And this is rooted in a sense of compassion, as we saw in the child of the well. And then you have uh, the sense of deference, where you uh, defer to your elders, your parents, and ultimately that gives rise to li, propriety, or ritual. So ultimately, ritual is one of the ways, ultimately, that we become good human beings and that we can cultivate our good human nature. Now, what do you do with these sprouts conflict? This is a problem for Mungza. So, for example, somebody asked him, uh, what if your sister-in-law were drowning, but you couldn't pull her out because it's against ritual propriety to touch a woman who is not your spouse or otherwise related? Now, Mungza says only a beast would not pull out his sister-in-law if she were drowning. It is the ritual that men and women should not touch when handing something to one another. But if your sister-in-law is drowning, it is a matter of discretion, and of course you should save her. However, uh, the interlocutor then asked, OK, but the world is drowning. Shouldn't we just throw ritual overboard? Is ritual still relevant? And Mungza says, yes, ritual is relevant. Because when the world is drowning, one should pull it out with the way, the Tao. But when one's sister is drowning, one pulls her out with one's hand. So here Mungs is saying that uh, the collection of ritual propriety that we have is still relevant in making sure that the world uh, is an orderly place. Now this is one objection to Mungs' uh, theory of human nature. Uh, there is a second objection, namely, if, humans are, if human nature is good, why are people bad? Uh, now, in order to, um, to explain why this is the case, Mungza offers a parable, the parable of Ox Mountain. So he says, once upon a time, there was this beautiful mountain with lush trees and lush vegetation. But when one day uh, people came with axes and they cut the trees off and they devastated it and they came back and they cut again. And then you had uh, all sorts of animals that came and grazed whatever was left. And so eventually Ox Mountain has become a devastating desert, whereas before it was beautiful and lush. And so his idea is that what makes human beings bad is not their nature, but its external circumstance. So, for example, he says that if people, it's not a coincidence that young men are violent in times of uh, famine, he says, and that young men are peaceful in times of plenty. It's not that their nature suddenly changes. But it's just the case that um, because of external circumstance, uh, they uh, differ. Now, uh, I'll now briefly talk about a second Confucian philosopher, namely Shunzi, who puts ritual even more central than uh, Mungzi did, uh, and who disagreed fundamentally with uh, Mungzi about uh, the role of uh, 
ritual. So for monks, a ritual is just one of the sprouts uh, that make us into, well, one of the virtues uh, that come out of our innate good human nature. Shunzi lived in the 3rd century BC, so a bit later uh, than Mengzi, although uh, we don't have exact precise dates. And he is known for a book that is likewise called uh, the Shunzi. And he thought, uh, in contrast to Mengzi, that human nature was bad. So he writes that people's nature is bad and their goodness is a matter of deliberate effort. Now, people's nature is such that they are born with a fondness for profit in them. If they follow along with this, then struggle and contention will arise, and yielding and deference will perish therein. They are born with feelings of hate and dislike in them. If they follow along with these, then cruelty and villainy will arise, and loyalty and trustworthiness will perish therein. They are born with desires of the eyes and ears, a fondness for beautiful sights and sounds. If they follow along with these, then lavishness and chaos will arise. And ritual and yi, which means law, personal honor, proper form and order will perish therein. Thus, if people follow along with their inborn dispositions and obey their nature, they are sure to come to struggle and contention, turn into disrupting social division and order, and end up becoming violent. But fortunately, there is ritual. In ancient times, the sage kings saw that their nature is bad. People were deviant, dangerous and not correct, unruly, chaotic and not well ordered. Therefore, for the people's sake, they set up the power of lords and superiors in order to oversee them. They made ritual and e, the righteousness, in order to transform them. They set up laws and standards in order to make them well ordered. They multiplied punishments and fines in order to restrain them. As a result, they caused all under heaven to come to order and conform to goodness. Such are the ordering influence of the sage kings and the transformative effects of ritual and e or righteousness. So, according to Shunzi, you had these ancient chase, sage kings of the Zhao dynasty that I talked about uh, last week, who invented the right rituals. And thanks to the right rituals, we can curb our innate desires which are bad our innate desires are bad uh, because we have this uh, tendency to um, for profit dislike of other people and uh, lavishness which would lead us into bad things but fortunately there is ritual to transform us i can give one example suppose that i didn't have a ritual that we didn't have etiquette or good manners and I just became very hungry after teaching and I wanted to ga grab a sandwich at uh, the cafeteria. Now, uh, since I have uh, this, this hunger, this desire for food, I would just go and push myself to the front of the line because I have, after all, uh, also a dislike for other people. I don't like all these other people, so I push them away. And then because I have a desire for profit, I also would not feel like paying, so I would just grab the sandwich and leave without paying. But fortunately, I have good manners, and the good manners prevent me from doing this, uh, prevent me from pushing myself to the front of the line, prevent me from uh, just grabbing what I want, and prevent me from not paying. And if I still wanted to do this, then there is the law uh, which would also stop me from doing this. Alpeting thinks that we can uh, do something about ritual, that we can shape our ritual so that it's relevant for today. So, for example, handshakes. Uh, handshakes are now uh, completely taboo, of course. But even after uh, the pandemic has subsided, you might wonder uh, what could take its place. Because, after all, uh, there's power play at hand and when you handshake. Uh, there's a uh, transmission of germs and you might think of other rituals that maybe we might rethink in the light uh, of what is happening now in such a way that we could have more harmonious ways uh, of living together. Thank you.